I just loved the costuming. I, I think I, I did this painting more for the uh, tears and tears of in the in the dress than than for the legs. And that's tears, T I E R S, not T E A R S, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there's a nostalgia here, and so so far in all your paintings, you seem to discuss. Uh, time is very important, the past, the present, the future, am yes. I right? That and literature, uh, which comes into my work quite a bit. Um, but I, I really think of my work as uh, like a journal, as a diary. And uh, so I'm really not for seeking images that are beyond my life. I'm not hunting for an interesting just image. If it hasn't touched my life in some way or another, then it's generally discarded. Uh, now, the next painting, speaking of touching your life, uh, is derived or inspired by a poem, is it not? Yes, it's the, uh, the Yeats poem in uh, The Second Coming, and, uh, which is not memorized, but uh, uh, the title of the painting is What Rough Beast? And uh, that section of the poem from the Second Coming, I think it was, uh, 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 was written in 1919 or 1920, says, uh, uh, but now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. Um, the uh, imagery reflects a number of uh, paintings that I did during this period where uh, the backgrounds are very monochromatic and are, are, are to build up contrast from something very strong and bright in, in the foreground. Um, what, what are these shapes in the back here? What what uh, they look like dancing abstract uh, Bob wire here blown uh -huh. way up uh, which I think has a, has a brutal beauty uh, someone said you know this has the beautiful uh, the, the uh, 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 tough beauty of like a shark where they're gorgeous but then you think of it in in uh, and common usage, and it's uh, and it's a and it's a tough image. Everybody as the chain, the lobsters, uh, the lobster claws. But in any case, it's organic, isn't it? Yes, it is. I actually took the source from a close-up photograph of Bob Wire, which had done, been crisscrossed in a in a Nazi concentration camp uh, photograph. I just kept blowing it up and blowing it up to get these shapes, and you can see how it it crosses leaving about a four inch square there. It also has the uh, symbolism of a crucifix there, doesn't it? Uh, it does, doesn't it? Maybe uh, rather unconscious, uh, yeah. And the chain also, you know, with the same sort of yeah. symbolism. It's just such a pretty chain. You know, the chain is not the chain that ties slaves together, but a chain uh, which is almost a psychological chain or a uh, a transitional chain of some yeah. kind. In medieval art, too, the chain was also a symbol of the connection of the spiritual and the real, and of the earth and the heavens, too. And so, uh, as you know, Arthur, I, I use a lot of symbolism in my work, uh, just as an homage to the history of art, if nothing else. Yes. Well, shall we talk about the Torah? Oh, here, let me hold this. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about this bow. The, uh, it's actually a, a Simmental bull. Uh, the, uh, it's from the, originally from the Simi Valley of Switzerland, and Tal being uh, a, a valley in German, the Simmental. It's very popular in France. It's actually a white and red bull, but not being a photographer and being a painting, I can kill the red and still be legitimate. Tell me, what is the, uh, is there some uh, reasoning or in intellectual idea between, behind this framed piece of paper that it's on or uh, uh, fragmented form within the painting? Uh, not particularly, I just liked, I liked that shape. It tends to, to frame it. Uh, 
And uh, this is a painting that was done in uh, what, 1986, which is the oldest painting in the show. But uh, it, it's very he it's on canvas, but it's very heavy because it's got uh, an awful lot of gesso on it. And uh, so I can scarred. You can get in close and get some of that texture. Is that possible? So many of the free-range cattle in uh, in the West, out in uh, in. in Texas and Arizona, uh, the uh, the hides are pretty heavily scarred and so on. It's the shadow of the microphone. Oh, it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's painted very thinly, but uh, but on top of very heavy coats of gesso. Well, the outline of the sort of piece of paper that it's on it gives it a fleeting quality, as if it's very transient. Uh, it's not a real bull, it's the idea of a bull. That's right. Yeah. It's a good point. I, and I was struck also by uh, uh, the uh, was it Marguerite's painting of the pipe, where it says, this is, it's not a pipe, it's a painting of a pipe. You know? This is not a bull, it is a painting of a bull. There's also sort of a voyeuristic aspect in like you're looking through a window at something, you know, like this is the surface and you're able to look through uh, to something that has more perspective on the, on the other side. Yeah. Shall we step around the corner to sure. the paintings? Now this painting is the key, uh, key painting. <laughs> for the exhibition uh, in terms of its title, is it not? Oh, the one in the other room was. Oh. This, this is uh, a special providence. Oh, it's very similar in terms of its uh, juxtaposition. Would you say? Exactly, and the, and the concept, too, of trying to take three elements and, and, and encompass all of mankind in that. Uh, like I say, it's, it's, the, it's another one of those paintings that you have high aspirations for, but doomed to failure, and that you can't capture all of Well, you humanity. succeeded in a great many of the pictures. <laughs> Tell me, uh, when you come to uh, symbolize, for example, in the watch, that it's 10 after 10, is that purely a formal consideration, or does that time, 10 after 10, mean that you painted it at that hour? It has no significance whatsoever. This is the way the source was. Look at, at uh, clock and watch ads. They're almost always set at this time. And so my source was like that, and I kept it like that. Uh, but I did want a symbol you know, for, uh, for time. And, uh, and again, this is one of, uh, like uh, one of the other paintings in the other rooms, done at the same time, where the idea is monochromatic background and a lot of color in the, in the foreground. The uh, next two paintings are an interesting juxtaposition because uh, to me, personally, they, there's an element of sadness in both of them. Yes. Would you like to talk about the pathos or the, uh, the gripping quality that one might see in if these If you let two? me say one more thing oh, sure. about this, and that is that uh, the title, of course, comes from Hamlet and, you know, Espresso uh, Provenance in the Fall of a Sparrow, and Hamlet's uh, soliloquy where he's talking to Horatio. So again, I just wanted to make that connection to how, how important literature, as well as the history of art, is to my work. Sorry. <laughs> That's a very good point. This painting is very uh, touching to me, and it's a very tough painting. It's, uh, uh, the, the title of it is for Maurice Bachka, and it's an acrylic on canvas. It was painted in 1985, so it's about the same age as the Simmental Bull. Um, uh, this was uh, an homage to a friend of mine who ran a restaurant called Le Chameleon, which you probably know uh, right off of Boulevard Marponas in, uh, in Paris. And uh, I 